two-week-long manhunt for prison escapee Danilo Calvacante. We've all seen video of the convicted killer who was acrobatically escaping the Chester County Jail there in Pennsylvania. The 34-year-old who was convicted of murdering his ex-girlfriend in front of her children was taken back into custody on Wednesday morning. That is video right there on your screen. If you watch the news conferences that were held daily to update the public, you probably saw Robert Clark. He's the supervisory deputy U.S. Marshal and joins us now to discuss more on how all of this played out. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So first off, just your initial thoughts, knowing that Calvacante is now in custody. He is no longer a threat to the public. Well, when the call came in to the command center that uh, the target was in custody, it, everyone was just elated. This was a roller coaster ride of a fugitive manhunt for two weeks. There were highs and lows in that investigation. There were times we thought we were close to him. Um, he wasn't there. There were times we thought we were getting close again. Uh, he wasn't there. So when that thermal imaging came out the night before we arrested him, uh, we were very hopeful. And then, of course, the weather system moved in. But we had high hopes uh, for the morning that we arrested him. So the state police, the BORTAC team did an awesome job um, executing their tactical plan and bringing him into custody. Describe for me the terrain and the area where he was finally located. Wow. Well, the terrain in both areas, both in Longwell Gardens in East Ant Mill, very, very thick vegetation. Um, a lot of places to hide the first uh, week of the manhunt, extreme heat. But when you talk about these uh, areas with the vegetation, it's it's so thick that unless you're stepping on them, you're not going to see them. And as a matter of fact, Calvacante, during the post arrest interview to our deputy marshal, said on three occasions, investigators uh, were within you know seven to ten yards of me, and that he could feel the heat. He noticed the law enforcement presence increasing day to day and that uh, he confirmed that Lieutenant Colonel Bivens plan was working. Surround him, get the tactical perimeter up, cut off his resources, stress him, make him make mistakes, make him move, get him in the open. And that's exactly what he did. And that's exactly what Cavalcante confirmed. And it sounds like Cavalcante had a lot to say after his arrest. Anything else that stood out from what he did tell investigators? Well, he, he talked a lot. We had our uh, deputy marshals go down and talk to him along with PA state police and county investigators. And we thought a post arrest interview uh, was very beneficial to us. So we went down, we asked him for an interview uh, with the utmost professionalism and courtesy. Um, we presented ourselves, he agreed to talk. I think that he was appreciative that we were respectful and he filled in the blanks for us. And that's information we can use as investigators going forward. So it was invaluable. He told us that the first three days, he barely moved at all. He didn't eat for three days. The first time that he ate was when he found a watermelon on a farm. He actually opened that watermelon with his head, he said, and he drank from stream water. When he went to the bathroom out into the woods, he would secure his fecal matter under leaves or foliage so that investigators wouldn't find him. And at one point he did say that he thought about giving up. He didn't mind the environment. He said the environment wasn't as tough as Brazil, however, he was not used to law enforcement presence. It was just every day there was more and more people out. He noticed that. He noticed the planes. He noticed the helicopters. So uh, ultimately, that was the reason he decided to move out of that first perimeter. So a lot of the things that we thought were happening, he confirmed to us, and, and that was valuable. Did he happen to say exactly what his plan was if he was planning to stay there in Pennsylvania or try to go elsewhere? Sure, his end game was ultimately to use that rifle uh, to carjack an individual. Uh, he wanted to get a vehicle. He wanted to head north to Canada or possibly uh, make his way to Puerto Rico. And he said that was going to happen within the next 24 hours. Uh, and the reason being was that there was such a heavy law enforcement presence in that second perimeter in the East Amel Township area that um, he had to get out of there. So it's just uh, a credit to the state police, a credit to the deputy marshals that were there, a credit to all the law enforcement partners that we were able to apprehend him before he was able to, commit, uh, able to commit another crime of violence. 
What does it mean to you to be able to see the people who are across the country who are rooting for law enforcement and saying, you know, great, this guy is finally in custody. They're applauding law enforcement. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's great. I think the Governor Shapiro said it best yesterday that this is how um, this is how law enforcement or government should work. That everyone working together on all different levels, uh, state, federal, and local, for the common goal uh, to bring a dangerous individual into custody. Um, I couldn't be happier working for Lieutenant Colonel Bivens. His incident command um, was just amazing. Uh, he's an amazing leader. Um, the people that we work with, the Pennsylvania State Police, our amazing law enforcement officers, all our parent agencies there, we were all on the same page, all lockstep, um, everyone working together. And I think that's part of the reason why we were able to get him within 14 days. Can you tell me about the police canine that was involved in helping to finally take him down and get him into custody? Sure. Well, I learned about Yoda just as... Uh, just as late as everybody else has, but uh, within talking to the Bortac team, Yoda is a three to four year old Belgian Malinois. Um, he is stationed out of um, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, and, um, and he's part of their tactical team. I know that when Yoda was deployed, uh, he ended up biting Mr. Cavalcanti on the top of his head because that was the only area that was protruding. Uh, afterwards, he bit a lower extremity and these dogs are bite and hold dogs. So uh, if he can't bite and hold, he's gonna try another spot. And ultimately he was successful in grabbing an area on Cavalcanti's lower extremity, uh, at which time then the CERT team and the Vortec team were able to move in and effect an arrest. Is there anything that the U.S. Marshal's Office, other law enforcement agencies can learn from this 14-day manhunt? We're talking two weeks there. There were a lot of different agencies involved. What can be learned, if anything, here for future situations? Well, each future investigation is different. Um, we can always learn from every investigation, whether big or small. That's why it was so valuable to get our deputy marshals over there to talk to Mr. Cavalcante. It was kind of uh, an after action, so to say. We needed certain things confirmed. We needed to make sure that everything that we were doing was correct. And I'm not saying everything was perfect, but what I am saying is the plan that Lieutenant Colonel Bivens had initiated of surround, cut off resources, stress him, move him, get him out in the open, have him make mistakes. Uh, it was executed flawlessly. Now, I know he broke that perimeter um, midway through the investigation, but you have to remember that a perimeter that large is next to impossible to fully secure. It's not a wall. It doesn't have ceilings. Um, it's just a very difficult task to secure that perimeter. But um, it happened. We had a team of deputy marshals um, that were planning uh, for a contingency should this happen, and we executed on that immediately. And I credit them because we were able to find that van so fast and be able to get out there and start investigating again, whether he left the area or he was still in the area. And the Lieutenant Colonel and I uh, said publicly both times that he's here until something suggests he's not here. So we continued to ground pound with our investigators out there and ultimately uh, we got proof of life that he was still in the area. And a lot of people probably don't realize just how dangerous this situation was. They watched it all kind of unfold, whether you live in the area or you're located anywhere else in the country. This was a dangerous operation that was going on, right? Very dangerous operation uh, for a dangerous individual. Uh, obviously, we all know that he was convicted uh, on a homicide here in Chester County. He's pending an open homicide in Brazil. From the statements he gave, he was ready to commit another act of violence with a firearm. Uh, extremely dangerous situation um, for everybody. Once he obtained that firearm, uh, it was, you know, it was a red flag to law enforcement that we had to really make sure that we took every precaution so that none of our officers got got hurt. And um, that's exactly what we did. And I believe that's why we deployed, or Bortac did, I can't speak for him. They deployed that tactical canine first to see if we could uh, get a resolution without using deadly force. So I commend their decision making. I commend PSP's decision making. And uh, I couldn't be happier, the US Marshal Service couldn't be happier to be part of this uh, law enforcement team to support this operation.
Robert Clark, Supervisory Deputy U.S. Marshal, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Is there anything else that you want to add before I let you go? No, the only thing is, I forgot to mention, uh, Cavalcante did have, have an interesting statement, and that was he knew that he had to pay for the crimes that he committed. However, he, he wasn't prepared to pay for it with his life. So maybe that gives you some um, motive or incentive of, of what he was actually thinking. Um, I thought it was an interesting statement that he provided to our investigators. We found it uh, very credible. So um, he was not going to surrender. Uh, although he stated he thought about it, he was going to run until the wheels fell off until we captured him. But the, our agency, the Marshal Service, was prepared to hunt him down wherever he went. We owed it to the good citizens of Chester County who endured this investigation for two weeks, and we owed it to the victim's family. So we were prepared to go the distance, but fortunately, uh, it was shut down within two weeks. All right, Robert Clark, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We appreciate it.